All right, what's up, y'all? I'm Tim Leak, and welcome back to my channel where we talk about real estate investing, entrepreneurship, and finance. And I had a quick video for you guys. Never mind the background, I am actually in my wife's office space, uh, her content space. I'm always over here taking over. But anyway, I want to go over a couple of scams with you guys that um, I just encountered. Uh, the first one is not really a scam. It's more like a um, like like a finesse. She's trying to finesse me. As you guys may know from my last video, I'm filling a vacancy that I have for my property in Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, I've been doing showings. I've been getting applicants. But my first bit of advice for Section A landlords or landlords in general, don't ever make a decision based off of a gut feeling. Oh, I just have a feeling. This one is the one. This one will be a good tenant. I just feel. It. Don't ever do that. It is a mistake to do that. I had this potential tenant call me right away. I could tell she had the gift of gab. Great personality. Like she had so much charisma. She can really talk. We're talking about the housing authority and section eight. Just talking about a lot. And before you know it, we're on the phone for like almost 30 minutes. It got to the point my wife was like, like, hang up, get off the phone with her. I say that to say she like was a talker and she she was saying the right thing. She sounded like a great tenant and she wanted me to send her the application. I told her when the showings would be and she said, okay, I want the application so I can fill it out and at the showing, when I come to the showing, I'll have it already filled out for you. So I sent her the application and the next thing you know, she writes me this. Hello, sorry to inform you that my bills must come first. Fortunately, I have never had to pay application fees or have a background check or credit check since I had my voucher. Besides when I rented a new home owned by a realtor. What? You're telling me nobody ever checked your background or your credit? Like, come on now. I know that's not what y'all out here doing. Y'all section eight landlords. You can't rent to someone without doing a background check. In my head, I'm like, okay, she, she gotta be lying. You telling me nobody checked your background except when you was renting something from a realtor. But anyway, I am an outstanding candidate for anyone's property. I don't have cable living beyond my income means. On the other hand, I do have to have Wi-Fi and that bill was due. It was $55.89. So now she's trying to justify why she can't afford my $55 application fees. Her last $55 had to be paid for her Wi-Fi bill. I'm like, I don't care. And then she included a screenshot of her paying her Wi-Fi bill for $55.89. I'm like, so? Like what? But anyway, it was $55.89 and I paid it today. So I do not have any application fees. I hope that everything works out for you with seeking a tenant for your property. Thank you for considering me. Have a good day. Obviously my application did what my application was supposed to do. Breaks down everything that's gonna go on for the application process. The background check, the credit check, the application fee, the um, checking the criminal history, the eviction history, doing a house visit. She saw that and said, no, nah, I don't want no parts of it. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. Rule number one, let the tenants screen themselves. But anyway, I wrote back. That's unfortunate to hear. Our screening measures may seem a bit aggressive, but I'm offering a high quality house in a high quality neighborhood and I'm a high quality landlord. See, and a high quality tenant. Background and credit checks are our standard screening practices, even with voucher holders. I'm sorry to hear that you or your children didn't have enough to cover the application fee because she has two or three grown children and she said that they all have jobs. So you're telling me none of them can afford $55 for application fee. None of these adults have $55. None of y'all, none of y'all adults that supposedly have jobs. Come on now. But if anything changes soon, please don't hesitate to reach out to see if it's still available. Wish you the best of luck. And then she decided to write back, housing authority checks our backgrounds as you should know. I mean, come on. As if the background check that the housing authority performs is like, means anything. Like, come on. All they pretty much do is kind of like verify that they're them. Like, okay, check your social. Okay, you're you? Okay, good. Don't ever just go off of that background check. I do understand that every landlord has their own stipulations and requirements. Like I stated before, I have only paid fees with a realtor. What do you know? I'm a realtor and I always live in high quality units with prestigious landlords. I thank you for your time. Best of luck with the tenant search. I highly doubt that prestigious landlords with high quality units are just leasing their properties to Section 8 tenants without doing a background check. This just sounded like a bunch of lies to me. So I decided to just search her name in the public records, which is the very first thing you should do whenever someone applies to live in your property. Once they fill out the application, look at the name, search it in the public records because it's free. Might as well do it. And when I looked it up, boy, was I not surprised. She had two pages of cases, whether she's the plaintiff, defendant, 
just all types of cases. People suing her, she suing people, companies suing her, it was just craziness. And I quickly realized like, oh, no wonder why she didn't wanna go through with the application. It would have been a waste of $55. So, I mean, she actually did the smart thing. She saw everything that the application consisted of, saw the application fee and decided to run. Like, she decided to get out of Dodge. Like, uh, let me come up with an excuse. I gotta pay my cable bill, I can't do it. Kudos to her, she didn't waste $55 because I doubt she would have got picked. But I can't say the same thing for this next person who tried to get over on me. So this next applicant, and this is when I was having showings. So she came to the showing and she brought her kids with her. So the kids was super excited to see the house. They were like, oh my God, this house is so big. Oh, look at my room. They, they looking in the fridge, looking in the freezer, like we'll have an ice maker. Oh my God, Ma, you won't have to go buy ice no more. Like they thought this house was amazing and they just thought it was just so big. I'm like, my house is not that big. It's only, it's a little over a thousand square feet. So it's not that big. So. Um, what got my attention was she said she lived in Bowie, Maryland. So anyone knows or familiar with uh, PG County, Bowie and Upper Marlboro are kind of like right next to each other. My house is in Sheltonham, but it's like right, Sheltonham is like in Upper Marlboro. It's right next to Upper Marlboro. And she was from, she lived in Bowie, but she wasn't familiar with the area. She's asking me, are there shopping centers around? And and I'm like, well, do you know where Brandywine is? She's like, no. I'm like, what about Waldorf? She's like, no. And I'm like, hold up. You, you've been living in Bowie the past five years and 15, 20 minutes down the road, you, like, you're not familiar with? Like, it was kind of a red flag to me. Like, okay, something's not adding up. So she filled out her application, paid her application fee. Like I said, I, I searched her name in the public records. She had a couple of things. Nothing really that serious, but the next thing you do, after you search her name in the public records, verify that the landlord's name that she put on the application for her current unit is actually the owner of that property. So this is also public records. So I looked up the address. The owner's name that was online was different from the owner's name that she put on the paper. This is odd. Let me do a little bit more investigating. So the real owner's name, I looked their name up in the public records. Come to find out, just last year, 2022, there were three or four cases that dealt with the house and how the house was being kept. So the first case was failing to maintain the exterior property areas in a clean and sanitary condition. And then it was failing to maintain the fence in good repair. And then another one was storing refuse and recycling receptacles in the front of the residence. So for some reason, this owner keeps getting sued by the state of Maryland because of things that's going on with the house. And if this tenant really did live in this residence for the past five years, this all happened while she was living there. She definitely wouldn't be qualified to live in my house if she can't even maintain her house in a sanitary condition. I honestly don't think she lives there. Here's the thing, when the kids were saying how big my house is, when I looked up that house, that house is even bigger than my house. Like, it just didn't make sense. It was too many red flags. And it was confirmed to me when I texted her, look, unfortunately, I couldn't qualify you because there were some issues dealing with your current landlord's information. Uh, best of luck to you and your kids. And she texted me back, not sure what that was about, but okay. She didn't try to explain anything. If someone's telling the truth, they'd be like, hold up, what's the issue? Call my landlord, I'll call him, I'll get him on the phone. Like, what's going on? Let's get this settled. Uh, so the next person I apply to won't have the same issue. But she was just like, uh, I don't, I'm not sure, but okay, whatever. So I knew something was up. But this is a lesson to landlords. Don't just take everything they say at face value. Make sure you do your research, do your due diligence. People will lie on the application. You have to make sure that you check everything they put on the application. You just gotta do your due diligence. So like I said, always search their name in the public records and then always search the land records to make sure that their landlord is actually the owner of that house. I just thought I'd share that with you guys. I'm here right now going through all these applications, got some good applicants. Hopefully you'll have somebody in this property pretty soon, but um, I will definitely keep you guys updated on everything with this house. And I can't wait to go over the numbers uh, and we can see how much this house is going to be making us. So look out for that video in the future. And like always, I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.